we go. Great. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the info session about the Ventress uh, Fellowship here at Playwright Center in partnership with the Ventress Theater Fund. We're really excited to see all of you here uh, to talk about the program, to answer some questions, and kind of get everybody set up for potential applications uh, coming after the new year. Um, I am Julia Brown. I'm the Artistic Programs Manager here at Playwright Center. I use she, her pronouns, uh, and I am one of the uh, facilitators and administrators of this program. I'm joined by Associate Artistic Director Haley Finn. Uh, Haley doesn't have a voice right now, and we're not going to make her strain it, um, but she will be popping into the chat occasionally, um, so keep an eye there. Um, I don't know if anyone can hear me, but thank you for being here. And yes, I don't have a voice, so... I'll use the chat, but welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Uh, and then we're also joined by Ben Pesner. Ben, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Ben Pesner from Ventures Theater Fund. Um, it's a privilege to be partnering with the Playwright Center on this wonderful initiative. Uh, I will uh, uh, let uh, Julia and, and Haley in the chat run the show, but I'm here for questions or if anybody uh, wants to know what Ventures is, I'm happy to talk about that. But thank you, everybody, for joining. Fantastic. Um, before we go any further, uh, I am I forgot to mention, uh, if captions would make things easier for you, uh, down at the bottom of your Zoom box, you'll see either a button that says CC, or if you click your dot, 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 um, there in your more drop down, there will be uh, an option to show subtitle or show caption, depending on what language they use. Um, we're using a third party captioning uh, service. Um, so that should pop up for you if need be. And it's our first time using this specific service. So if you have any feedback on how the captions came through for you, let me know in the chat, um, because I'm always we always want to improve uh, what we're able to do on Zoom. Um, so we're going to start out, uh, just so you know what we're going to talk about, we'll talk a little bit about kind of the history and um, the mission of the program and how it's developed to where it is right now. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about the benefits of the program, the eligibility and kind of the, the rules around applications. Uh, then I'll show you the website. I know many of you have already looked at it, but we'll, we'll take a look at it and then talk about what the application is going to look like and kind of what this matchmaking process might look like look like for some of you. Uh, and then we'll talk about kind of the timeline through selection and we'll open up for questions. Uh, if you do have questions based on anything that we're saying, feel free to drop them in the chat or, um, you know, raise a hand or anything like that. And we can address them midstream or you can save them for the end, whatever's best for you. Um, so first, we want to talk a little bit about this program. Um, so the Ventures Fellowship has been around for a number of years. It was originally at the Lark Play Development Center. Uh, and the mission of this uh, fellowship program is really about getting plays into production and getting plays that are challenging, that are bold, that are doing something new theatrically, um, plays that fit this idea of what is Ventress, uh, which often mean plays that don't get produced as often or that have production challenges that are hard for producing theaters to necessarily meet. Um, and so this program has always uh, combined support for the individual playwright along with production subsidy to help move um, plays from the development process into the production process. Um, and so at the LARC, that, that was true as well. When the LARC sadly uh, shut down, we inherited this program and we're very excited to be the new home for it. And um, that happened in January of this year, which was midstream of the current class of Ventress Fellows. And so this is our first time going through the application and selection process with the program being here at Playwright Center. And it's also our first time with it being this new model. So we're all we're learning at the same time as you are all learning and we're all figuring out kind of the best way uh, to go through this process together. Um, so a couple of things that have changed since the uh, the last iteration of this fellowship is the, the nomination process. That's kind of the biggest um, shift that has happened. So while before um, playwrights, applied individually and then once they were selected worked on trying to find theater theaters that would be homes for their plays now we are working on a co-application model and playwrights were nominated by other playwrights 
And that was something that was really important to us to kind of give more agency and voice to playwrights in the process. So it's not only um, decision making coming from producing theaters, but also some decision making coming from your writing peers as well. Uh, and so we invited a large group of playwrights nationally to think about a play that is unproduced that they really admire, that they would absolutely love to see on stage, and that would fit the criteria of what a venturous play might be. And that is how we ended up with this list of 50 plays. Um, and when I show you the site, you'll be able to see a quote from each nominator as well. Um, so it was important to us that the beginning stage of that process was really playwright, playwright led and playwright centric. Now we're at the point where theaters are getting involved with the process, which is really exciting. Um, and so as opposed to former years, when there are individual applications, theaters and playwrights will be applying together with a commitment that if they are selected, that theater will be the one to produce the world premiere of the nominated play that they're applying with. So that's kind of the a big change to the program. We've also increased the potential production subsidy from $50,000 to $75,000, um, which is really exciting. Uh, and we're really grateful to the Ventures Foundation for um, helping us kind of move the production subsidy into something that makes these productions really possible. Uh, and we're really excited about, about what that will mean. The last thing that's going to happen that's that's different is that when we announce the recipients of the fellowship, we will also be publicly announcing the entire list. And so while now it's a little bit closed, you know, it's still under a password protection and that's only going to the writers and theaters that may apply in the spring, it will be a big public um, announcement, press release, all of that so that everybody can see the list of these exciting plays whether or not they become fellows or they become, um, they have a production through this process, we want everybody to take a look at them and get to know you as writers, get to know your work and ideally get excited and produce all of them in the next few years. That's the dream. Um, so that's a little bit about kind of where we came from uh, and, and how we changed this process. Um, ben, do you have anything to add from the Ventress perspective about since you've seen this entire kind of transition process? Um, well, in short, no, Julie. Julie, you've done a, a beautiful job of of explaining the the, the program, and thank you for that. Um, just for those who don't know, Ventress Theater Fund um, supports uh, playwrights by uh, encouraging them to write and encouraging theaters to produce plays that are large in scale, ambitious in scope, challenging in form, controversial in subject matter, experimental in concept, uh, whatever. And the word we use for that is venturous. Um, and some of you don't know that we also fund artist-driven initiatives that embrace agency for playwrights at all stages of their careers and champion creative growth and financial security for dramatists. This is relatively new for us. You'll be hearing more about that things like international exchange and how we can uh, wrap our uh, collective brains around health insurance for theater artists, including playwrights and stuff like that. Um, just one last shout out to um, May Adralis, who had the, uh, the impossible job at the Lark of trying to figure out what to do with all of these wonderful programs. I'm happy to say she uh, this was the easiest one of all to rehome because the folks at the Playwright Center just raised their hands and said, we'd love to host this. So shout out to Haley, Julia, Jeremy, and the whole team who not only agreed to uh, rehome this program, but also to rethink it. And all of the changes that you've heard Julia speak about really come from um, their input. Very excited that two uh, of our past fellows are being produced in major regional theaters this year. Um, at least two, I should say, uh, and uh, looking forward to, to many more. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, and we could not be more excited. This is when we were able to start the new version of this program. We've been just very giddy um, with being able to, to provide this amount of support, um, which is my segue into what does the support look like? Uh, so selected fellows are going to, the playwright will receive 
uh, $50,000 over the course of two years. This is a two-year fellowship program. Um, and so I also like to mention that in that if you decide not to apply this year and think maybe I'll apply next year or the next cycle, because there is the nomination process and we we are going to be doing this every two years, um, you may want to apply this year instead. I just like to give that note every time we're on a two-year process. Um, but the, the fellows will receive um, the stipend along with some really in-depth play development and career development support. Um, so the development funds equal about 15,000 over the two years. So that gives uh, time and opportunity to travel here to the Playwright Center to bring in collaborators that you need, people from the theater to really get the play ready for the production um, that we hope will happen or that will happen if you uh, receive the, the fellowship. Um, and also the other resources that all Playwright Center fellows uh, get to take advantage of, which is connections in the field, both here in the Twin Cities and nationally, um, access to all of our resources and programming uh, in whatever way is useful to you. We always tailor every uh, opportunity to the writer who has received a fellowship. Um, and so wherever you're at and whatever you need to kind of help move this play and your career forward is really what we'll be working on with you. For the partnering theater, um, you will receive uh, the opportunity to uh, receive up to $75,000 as a production subsidy. Um, and that will be a process that you go through with the the foundation. Um, the, so the rules around that um, have to do with the funds going specifically to this production. And we can talk about the details if you have questions about how things might break down. For example, if a member of your staff is going to be directing, you know, how um, covering some of that salary or, or things like that um, in terms of what counts as production costs. But that is the intention of where those funds will go. Uh, and the 75000 cannot be more than 50% of the total production budget. So if you uh, have a production that a, has a slightly smaller budget, then the subsidy will be slightly smaller. So um, if you need to run any numbers or have any questions for myself, Haley, Ben will be happy uh, to talk about specific situations. Um, so that's kind of the the benefits going into this. When we talk about the production, the uh, idea is that the production would happen within three years of the fellowship announcement. Um, so that would be within three years of about June of 2023. Um, so as you're thinking about what's possible for your theater with what you have programmed so far or what you're looking at over the next few years, that's the timeline that we're working with for this particular opportunity. Haley or Ben, any additions to benefits or other parts of the program that I'm forgetting about? We're good. All right. Great. This is our first info session of this new program, so I don't have all of my spiels memorized yet. Um, next, we'll go into some eligibility and kind of the rules around applying, which we've talked a little bit about already. Um, the only plays that are considered for this opportunity this year are the ones that have been nominated. So if you are a playwright and you have another play that you would be interested in, that this is not the opportunity for that. Um, there are other programs at the Playwright Center you should look at, uh, but uh, for this, it's specifically the plays that have been nominated. Each nominated play uh, uh, and playwright can apply with one theater and each theater can apply with one playwright. So basically no, no doubling up um, on either side of the equation. You will apply together, which means that between now and the application deadline of March 16th, we hope that you'll be spending time reading plays, um, reaching out to the playwrights, having conversations about what a production might look like, about what a collaboration might look like, and really taking um, you know, the time to, to figure out if there's a good fit, both from the writer's perspective and from the theater's perspective. Um, we talked about the production subsidy. March 16th is the deadline um, for everything to come in together. Uh, and the playwrights will submit a part of the application and the theater will submit a part of the application. I'm gonna share my screen really quickly um, so that we can take a look at the website and you can see where all of this information is living. 
And so I'm going to do this. Here we go. We can see this, right? Yes, nods. Love it. Um, so this is the main Ventress uh, Fellowship site. So you'll see um, two active buttons here, one to view the list of plays and one here to request access. If you are a representative of a theater and you haven't yet requested access, click this button, fill out the form, that will go to me and I will send you the password. The reason we're doing it this way instead of just giving you all the password from Jump is because this is kind of the only way that we can know who's viewing um, the plays and who has expressed interest. And that's a way that then I can send you reminders if there are other resources or updates or things that you might need to know throughout the, the process. If you've asked me for a password, then I know that you at least have expressed some interest. Um, so that's one of the reasons that we do it that way. We also keep the list password protected at this stage because these are plays in progress. The scripts are available on the pages. Um, and so we don't want to just put that all out to anybody in the world to read any of these scripts. We want to kind of keep it contained at this point um, to the people who may be involved in the process. So on this page, you'll see a breakdown of the mission that we went over, um, the definition of Ventress that Ben went over with us, as well as um, some details about the benefits. Then it takes you down to the application and selection process. If you are somebody who has applied for Playwright Center fellowships over the past few years, this is going to look a little different for you. Uh, for our other programs, we use the application platform called Slide Room. And for this, we're actually not using that platform, partially because the application is a little bit simpler and also because it is a co-application and Slide Room doesn't have the capability to do that at this time. Um, so Basically, what will happen through from now through the deadline is a time for you to read plays, talk to each other, strategize, come up with ideas for what an application might look like. We're at this intro session right now. There's another in January. If you have there are other theaters you're interested in or writers you're interested in matching with and you want to attend an intro session together, there's another opportunity. Um, then the application is due on March 16th. So the playwright is going to apply with a one-page artistic statement talking about the impact that the fellowship will have on you and your development as an artist and a professional, um, kind of a why this program, why now, why for me kind of thing. Then a paragraph about why you would like this play produced at the theater you're applying with. This is really our way to, to see and know that you have had conversations. This is a collaboration you're excited about. This is, um, you're comfortable with what the theater is going to bring to the production, um, everything like that, that there's there's an intentionality um, with this partnership. Um, so that's really what we wanna get from this second statement. And then the draft of the play. If uh, the current draft is currently on the website, um, but of course, many of you are still working on those. So if there are updates by the application deadline, um, you can include an updated draft at that point. So the playwright will email all of those things to me. My email address is right up here as a Word doc or a PDF. So that's what we can open. Um, and so I will compile that together. Yeah. From the theater, we are looking for a contact page with whoever is going to be the primary contact for this opportunity if you're selected. The main person who we're going to talk to about the subsidy, about workshops, about scheduling and all of that kind of thing. So we want to know their contact information, what their role is at the theater, and then a statement saying that you are committed to producing this play on that three-year timeline if you are selected. Then we also want a statement similar to what the playwright is giving, a statement from the theater about what is your interest in producing this play? Why this playwright? Why this play? Why is your theater a great fit for it and your audiences? Really anything to talk again about the intentional partnership between the theater and the playwright and why this opportunity is the right moment and the right opportunity for this particular partnership to go forward. So that's everything that the application involves. There's no extra letters of recommendation or anything like that. You've already gotten the nomination. That basically counts as the same thing. Um, and my contact information is down here. Um, if you have any questions at any time throughout the process, please reach out 
that's what I'm here for. Um, and now I'm going to show you the actual list itself if you haven't had a chance to look at it. So it's going to take you to this password page. 15, 15 here we go. And so you'll see this whole list, it's alphabetical by title. Um, and we have these 50 plays. So for each play, you'll see the title, the playwright, a quote from the nominator about why they're excited about that particular piece, a little bit about the play from the playwright, a synopsis or blurb or something like that, and a bio um, for the playwright. We've also included here on the right, this button on each, each play is, uh, will download the play for you. So that is just a PDF of, of the script itself. And then this contact is an email either for the playwright or for their agent management, kind of whoever the playwright has decided is going to um, be in charge of contact for this opportunity. So you'll see each one is a little bit different, um, but that is the person that they do want you to contact. So say I'm interested in this particular play by Janine, um, I'll click this button to read the play. And then when I want to start a conversation about getting to know her, getting to know the play, getting to know what they you know, are looking for in a partnership, I would contact this person with this email address uh, and start that conversation and see where it goes. Um, so we kind of have been calling it a matchmaking process because it is a little bit like dating around and getting to know people and getting to know a little bit about what they're about and then seeing what's a good fit. Um, in terms of the selection process, uh, after all of the applications are in in March, depending on how many applicants uh, we have this year, um, that's going to inform sort of how the selection process works, but it'll um, likely go to a first round of evaluators who will look at all of the materials, narrow it down to a finalist group, um, and from there, the final selection will be made. We anticipate the final announcement and notifying everybody who um, has applied will happen in June of 2023. And at that point, again, we will be publicizing this entire list along with who the new fellows and who the selected theaters are. I'm going to stop my screen share really quick. I know that was a lot of text coming at you very quickly. Um, oh, yes, Haley, thank you for adding that. Um, sorry, my screen share, I didn't have my chat open. Playwrights absolutely um, reach out to theaters as well. If there are theaters who you've always wanted to work with or who you have a relationship with, who, hey, you did this, these plays and that really is a similar aesthetic to what I'm trying to do. Maybe you would like this. Um, I did share with all the nominated writers the initial list of theaters who we invited. Um, some more have uh, been added by other writers um, who have reached out and said, hey, ask for the password here, um, but please feel free to reach out to anybody. There are no um, eligibility rules around what kind of theater, what size of theater, what state they're in, kind of uh, anything like that. It's If you are excited about working with them, then absolutely um, put in an application together. Um, for And yes, thank you, Haley. Uh, for playwrights who are interested in reaching out to theaters and wanting to strategize on the best way to do that, Haley is um, offering some one-on-one -on -one consultation sessions. Um, a couple are happening this week and we do have openings in January as well. So if you look at your invitation email, you'll see a link to where you can sign up for those. Um, if you've lost that email or just want to do it a different way, you can reach out to me um, and I'll be happy to, to help you schedule some time to talk to Haley about that. Um, Deborah, great question. We are looking at uh, selecting three playwright theater partnerships. So there'll be a total of three fellows and three different theaters partnered with, with them. There has to be a more elegant way to say that, but three is the answer. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that kind of takes us through the whole process uh, from pre-beginning to announcement. Um, Haley or Ben, do you have anything to add before we open up for any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to um, add a uh, couple things. First of all, can you, Julia, just talk about this, the selection process? Who's going to make the selections and how does that happen? And what involvement, if any, Ventures Theater Fund and the Playwright Center have in that? 
that's something that is still in progress in terms of exactly who that's going to be. Um, in our general process, uh, we recruit readers for all of our programs from a really large national list of other playwrights, dramaturgs, directors, artistic directors, lit managers, educators, kind of people on all different sides of the new play world and people who are really excited about new work um, and generous readers. That's really important to us. Um, so the first round would likely be that uh, come from that group of people. Um, and then depending on our numbers and how things narrow down to the finalist pool, um, we don't have a set uh, final selection panel yet, um, but that is kind of the next thing that we'll do. Um, Haley, any additions to that plan? I, I just want to be clear that the panel will be independent of uh, people who work at Ventures Theater Fund and the Playwright Center. So it will be a panel of theater people um, who don't, who aren't affiliated with either organization. I just think it's important to say that. Um, Thank you for that. And then also in terms of theater eligibility, there are, um, uh, there are certain requirements not involving, you know, budget size or whatever, but um, we do um, limit this to theaters that produce on Actors' Equity Association contracts. So that's just one thing um, that's in, an important value for, uh, for Ventures uh, for, for this as well. And you can we can discuss the details about that um, later if anybody has any questions there. And also, you know, Ventures Theater Fund is a long, um, there's a lot of words there, which stuck my pronouns all the way to the end of the, um, of my of the thing under my screen. So I should say them out loud, it's he, him. Great, thank you. And thank you, Haley, for um, highlighting that uh, for, for each production, there needs to be a minimum of two equity contracts. Um, great, a couple of questions, a question here uh, from Kesa, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, uh, is having a physical space a requirement for the theaters? Ben, you have thoughts on that? No. Not at all. No, it's, uh, it, you know, producing organizations, uh, uh, as you all know, take on many different kinds of models, whether they have a physical space or not is, is not the issue. As long as the producing organization is eligible, um, you know, whatever the space is, the space is. Great. And each of these productions will have, you know, different needs for space. So, you know, a creative way to approach that is always a good thing too. Um, and, and just oh, to ahead. be clear about one thing, uh, there is a uh, an application as Julia described where the, the theater and the playwright apply together for the fellowship. And then once that happens, um, the theater then will apply for the production grant. Um, and uh, there's no reason why the theater wouldn't receive the production grant, but because we operate through uh, a donor advised fund, um, we need to be able to um, submit an application for that. It has to be approved, et cetera. So the, it'll be the easiest application ever um, <laughs> because you've already, because the theater has already submitted the application and, and, it, and it's received, uh, you know, the fellowship. But there will be a separate process later where you'll share your budget and, uh, and that uh, amount will then be um, put through a, a separate application process, um, which as I said, will be really easy. Um, it'll be approved by uh, through our donor advised fund, and then there'll be a very modest reporting requirement. And the reason for that is just um, to give us some feedback and guidance for the next round of the fellowship. That's great. Thank you. Um, and to highlight a, a question that had come up uh, a, a little while ago, when you are putting in your application in March, you do not need to provide a production budget. But later on in the process, that will be kind of part of, of um, the reporting structure and, and around the subsidy of the actual uh, production budget. But you don't need to have all of that set when you apply. Um, a couple other great questions. Ro has a great question about uh, what kind of things the panel considers when evaluating the application and what makes a strong partnership and application. That's a great question. Um, I think one of the things is what makes this play venturous? What, what are you trying to do with this play that is new, that is bold, that is challenging? Um, 
and, you know, something that, that fits this, you know, why this play, why now that the classic application question. Um, and then also what makes this partnership the right home for your play? Is this theater going to be the place that gives you the production that you are dreaming of the production that when you are writing the play, that's what you're writing towards. You know, it's not going to make you compromise on, you know, all of your vision or things like that. Like, what is it about this collaboration? Whether that's the people at the theater you'd be working with, whether, whether that's past work that they've done that you've admired, whether that's the city they're in and the audience there. And hey, this audience is really looking for the story that I'm telling right now. Um, and that's why this partnership is really compelling. Uh, other things like that, that kind of, that are specific to you and this play and why this partnership is going to actually give you a truly venturous production um, of this piece that the world needs and that people, these stories that, that people are, um, you know, going to get a lot out of seeing and that they don't get to see every day. Can I add one thing to that, Julia? Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is, please. Um, um, speaking here for Venturous, uh, you know, we're uh, thrilled to be able to offer these $75,000 production grants. And so uh, a question that we'll ask the um, panel to ask is, you know, what are the obstacles that this $75,000 can can resolve? What what makes this a heavy lift? Um, you all produce, well, those of you who are uh, representing theaters produce plays all the time. Um, this grant is particularly intended for those plays that you think, oh, I'd love to do this, but I can't, you know, I don't think I, I, I can afford that. And we let you define, you know, what that would be. That's what Venturous um, celebrates. That's great. And some of that, that may be a tech thing. It may be casting. It may be, you know, this casting is so specific that in the places I've been working in the past, we haven't gotten the right people in, but with that subsidy, we could do it. Or it might be, you know, specific types of collaborators, you know, I need 16 trapeze artists to really, you know, get that moment in act two to stick. Um, and I haven't had access to those people or to that resource. So um, in general, what I would say for kind of across the board for all kind of fellowship applications, specificity is your friend. Um, anything that's really the, the panel can really get the idea of what your kind of going for with your piece and what the theater is then going to help you move forward. Um, so they can really envision that and say like that, I'm excited about that as a thing that I want to advocate for. Yeah. And I just want to add one thing, which is, I suspect that the panel is not going to be all that interested in, oh, you know, we, we love this play and we want to give it a really great first class production with, you know, a very, very detailed set and lots of period costumes or whatever. Um, it's not, the intention here isn't to elevate product production levels, it's to, um, it's to get plays that wouldn't otherwise be produced on the stage. But again, we'll leave that to the committee to, to get into the details of. Great. Um, a great question here from Ilana about uh, how many theaters were invited initially. Our initial list, I believe was 589. Um, who we sent uh, the initial invitation out. There have been some more additions uh, in the last couple of weeks, um, either from theaters reaching out to us or playwrights reaching out to theaters. So I think we're up to about 607, something like that. Um, but it's a big a big batch uh, and we're always happy for, for more people and theaters that we haven't had a relationship with or, or haven't met before. Um, so if you have colleagues at other organizations that you think would be interested, please feel free to, to send them the website and then they just have to ask me for the password. Um, Sivan, great question. Co-productions between theaters and option if applying upfront for the partnership or a theater company in residence at another institution applying jointly with a host company. Yes, yeah, co-productions, if that makes sense, that's great. Um, you can articulate that in your application. Um, but again, each theater can apply with one writer. Um, so you wouldn't be able to apply like with four different co-production applications, if that makes sense. Um, so even if there are two theaters together, that's their one, each of their one application, if that makes sense. 
Um, but definitely outline that in your application, kind of why why the co-production makes sense, what's that going to allow you to do, um, et cetera, et cetera. That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, Ba, 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 ba. And Haley, a, a good note, this can be a new collaboration or an existing relationship. So if it's a place who that has done your work before, that is not a knock against you in any way, that's great. But also if you've never talked to those people before and you're based in LA and they're based in Atlanta and you've never been there, um, that's also great. So there's no kind of hierarchy to previous relationship versus new relationship. Um. Rebecca is asking if there isn't a co-producer at this time, but there might be one in the future for an eventual production, is there a specific way this should be handled? I would say it's kind of up to you if it seems like, yes, that's a very likely thing. And that's part of our strategy and what we're planning on. I would put that in your application just for the information about this is how the production would happen. If it's something that's kind of like, eh, may or may not could give, you know, might, won't have a big effect at this stage um, and, and you're not sure who it would be or how it would work, then maybe it's not at the point to mention that. Um, but if it's a thing that's like, if we can't get this co-production, then we can't do the production, then, um, you know, you want to be able to commit to the production if you are selected. Um, so that doesn't really answer your question, but it's sort of a case by case uh, thing based on on the situation that you're in. And if it helps to email me or you can reach out to me or Haley um, to talk about that, like the specific situation that you're in, we'd be happy to do that. And I'll just chime in to say that when it comes to the production subsidy, um, you know, uh, uh, we, uh, we value sort of transparency above all. Uh, uh, Venturous uh, just wants to know who, who's involved, who's over the title, who, who, who's, um, you know, wh which theaters are involved. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, being, up, being transparent about that uh, is always helpful. Um, nobody likes to show up at the, or we don't like to show up at theater, open the playbill and see lots of names on the title page that we didn't expect to see. Um, and the bottom line is uh, our goal is to help uh, theaters produce plays. So we will uh, do our best to figure out what that means in terms of how the potential uh, production subsidy, uh, how co-productions are managed uh, when it comes to um, the production subsidy. Thank you. That's great. Um, and Reg, great question. Yes, the production must open between June 2023 and June 2026. Um, and am I correct, Ben, that if it, say it would open in June 2026 and run, you know, through July, be, if the opening date is within that three years, then that's fine. Okay. That's, that's what I figured. So yes, you kind of have three years. And so two of those years, the fellow will be on fellowship with Playwright Center. Um, so if you need more development workshops or things like resources like that, um, but also if you're in a situation where, hey, it makes sense for us to do it in one year. Great. Awesome. That is cool. Um, you know, we're not going to dictate how your schedule should lay out. That's totally between you and the writer and what makes sense. Uh, Elle, yes. Hi. Hi. Quick question. Um, I, you said something, I'm sorry, I missed it or I didn't clock it. You can apply this year or next year. Is that, can you, sorry. you can, you mm. only apply this year. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was trying to be clear and then I muddied things um, because it's a two-year program. So you'd be applying now and you would be a fellow through 2023 and 2024. And so then we won't be doing a selection process again until 2024 for five, six, if that makes sense. That does make sense. So yes. And the application by March 16th of 2023. We've recently changed some other programs that we run to be two years. And so I've been doing a lot of people saying, I'll apply next year. And I always feel the need to say, there is no next year. It's in two years. <laughs> Can I ask one more question? Please do. Now I'm unmuted. Um, my other question was, how, how important is it or is it not to have commitments like commitment letters from potential cast members or like collaborative collaborators, creative team. Yeah. You don't need any of this at this point. It's really just um, what we're looking for is just from the playwright and from 
the theater representative and will kind of as if you're selected as a fellow as you go through the fellowship years and the production then you know we leave that up to you guys to work out and if it's something where you're doing a playwright center workshop as a fellow and you hey I need to bring in these collaborators who are going to be on the production that's you know that's absolutely what those development funds are designed to help with and if you know people, if you say like, I'm definitely going to work with this director, or I've written this play for this specific actor, and the theater is committed to bringing them in, you know, if if it's something that makes sense to add to your statements, absolutely. But you don't need to have, you know, any kind of cast list, crew list, any commitments or anything at this point. It's definitely, you can be much earlier in the process. Any other questions or things that can be clarified? Awesome. Well, I'm going to drop my email in the chat. Um, please use it whenever you want. Um, and oh, great. Thank you, Alana. Yes, I'm glad it is feeling straightforward. Um, the first year of a program is always because we haven't got <coughs> 100 questions about it yet to clarify. So it's always very, um, very good to hear. And, and yes, a big, as you mentioned, a big chunk of this is the relationship building. Um, and if that's something for me, that's, that's a scary thing for me personally to reach out to people. So um, I definitely recommend um, if you want to talk things over with us uh, and playwrights to, to sign up for those one-on-ones with Haley, um, that can really help sort of get you a a plan of attack and feel a little more confident um, with that kind of thing. So you'll see Haley's email in the chat, my email in the chat. Um, please reach out. And we're just really excited to hear about how your conversations are going and um, answer any questions and could not be more excited to receive applications uh, in March or earlier if you want to, but by March 16th. All right. Yes, players dominating playwrights. That is such an exciting part of this. And I hope that you all, writers, you all have the password to the, the website. I hope you get a chance to read each other's stuff and, and get to know each other's work and get excited about all of these potential plays out in the world. All right. If this is, uh, we're all set, I'm going to stop record, um, but I can hang out for another couple minutes if anybody has um, other questions or um, things I wanted to talk about. But thank you so much for joining us uh, and have a great rest of the year. My goodness. <laughs>